studio with me. I'd like to welcome Tom Wilson. You're, uh, you're back again after an hour. I'm taking over the station. I, it's taken me 59 years to come and be on your radio station, yeah. and now I'm not leaving. Oh, okay, you're hired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you can sing, you got a good voice, you're all good. <laughs> we go. Now, earlier on, you were on the talk show at noon hour, and you were talking about your book. Uh-huh. Uh, briefly, just just give us a rundown on the book. And oh, uh, the music oh, thing. Uh, well, uh, well, uh, music. I've been uh, playing music for forty five years, mm-hmm. and um, I'm virtually unknown in Quebec, which yeah. is uh, it's an interesting cultural Canadian cultural factor. Right. In that uh, I can hang gold records on the wall and stick Junos and Grammys or whatever on the shelf, but um, in Quebec. Uh, I couldn't get arrested, you know, <laughs> which is, uh, which is, uh, you know, that's, that's okay because it makes it easier for me to come here. But we, uh, it's funny, I was in a band in the 90s called Junk House, which had right, uh, I like a, a, a unbelievable string of good luck and hits and, and, and great selling records. And we'd go to Paris, France and play for 2,000 people mm-hmm. and then come home and go to Montreal and play for 20. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, and it's, exactly. just, it's just the way it is. Uh, somehow it didn't translate. So um, uh, the fact that my family and uh, uh, my ancestors are all from here, right. from Ganawage. Uh It kind of brings new life into my art that has nothing to do. I'm crossing over into the Quebec, uh, crossing over the Quebec border on my own terms now. Yeah. And uh, whether they like it or not, I'm here. There you go. And that, uh, just quickly, you're going to be performing uh, in the area in Montreal anytime soon. I'm, I'm not. I'm uh, uh, I'm going to be in Ottawa, though. That's cool. Uh, cool, cool pretty close. Oh, uh, yeah. It's an hour and a half. Uh, yeah. October 4th, I'm playing in Ottawa. I'm, pl- yeah. I'm doing a, what we call Symphonic Scars show, which is a, a, a literary recital okay. involving uh, stories and readings and music. Uh, that I've written for symphony orchestras that uh, I'm performing with the uh, National Arts Center Orchestra at the National Arts Center in Ottawa on oh, October nice. 4th. The interesting factor that's uh, relative to this uh, end of the world is that um, it's all about my journey back home to Ganawage. Okay. Um, uh, I used to come here, uh, be brought here around Christmas time and stuff, and kind of uh, I was in a bit of a witness protection program in that I didn't really know that I... I had uh, family here. I didn't know that I was a Mohawk. And I was taken to my uh, grandfather's house, uh, John Lazar, and uh, Mm kind of kept indoors, you know. I was never really allowed to walk around here in the village. So um, uh, the the Symphonic Scar Show, the book is all about the long road home. Oh, okay. Uh, the fact that I was born a Mohawk baby and uh, yeah. and I finally returned here as a Mohawk man after only finding out six years ago that this is where I'm from. Oh, okay, interesting. And uh, on your oh, okay, I got a few albums here. Uh, the one we just played, Beautiful Scars, that's off. Uh, the album Kings and Kings from Blackie and the Rodeo Kings. When was this released? Oh, it's a couple of years old. Yeah. Uh, Blackie and the Rodeo Kings is yet another, uh, well, a, a band out of Nashville. Yeah. Uh, Nashville and uh, a Toronto area, you know. I'm right. from Hamilton. Uh, I live in Hamilton. Uh, Blackie and the Rodeo Kings is, uh, I guess, considered an Americana band. It's been together 22 years. It's played uh, the Grand Old Opry in Nashville. Um, and... Uh, we tour everywhere except yeah. Quebec. <laughs> again, again to come back. What is it? What is it? I don't know. I think we should actually come and play Ganawage. I think it would be, would a, be a real cool. kick for us to come here yeah. and play. And um, and and you know, since I'm uh, 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 kind of belong here, I think it would be a kind of a, a good gig for us to come and do. Oh, you know? absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I think uh, I think it'd sell out the place totally. And uh, here I got Tom Wilson dog ears. Yeah. Tell me about that. When did it come out? Oh, that was, uh, I mean, I just keep making records. See, I, I don't really worry about uh, what names I work under. Oh, I work okay. under the, a name. I work with a band called the Cowboy Junkies. We have right. a project under Lee Harvey Osmond, which I played for Mitch Milnick uh, right. on the uh, anniversary of The Last Waltz. Yeah. Blackie and the Rodeo Kings, which is uh, still a going concern. I was in a band called Junk House, which mm-hmm. was, uh, and, and the Tom Wilson records, uh, I just make them as I go along. You know, oh, okay. That was recorded in Nashville. There's a great little number on that uh, called Talk of the Town that I recorded with Roseanne Cash on that oh, record. Cool. So you can look that up. 
Okay. If you like and uh, and play that, if you like, or uh, you know what, you just play whatever you want. Well, one of the songs I'm looking for, uh, somebody called me to a- ask about it. We just talked about it briefly off air, and I think I'm not sure if it's on this one. Aboriginal Day, you were in Ottawa, uh-huh. and played a song that's relative to the experience you were just telling me about. Yeah, and that that in fact. Um that song is is being released uh, okay. on a Lee Harvey Osmond record that's coming out. That's coming out. Okay. That I actually have on my phone, but I don't have I don't have it available to you. Yeah, um, yeah. The speaker on the phone and our mics won't work. So it's well. not going to be so good. <laughs> uh, and I do have it. Uh, uh, I will be performing. That song is is kind of the cornerstone, mm-hmm. uh, the centerpiece for the symphonic show I'm doing in Ottawa oh, okay. on October fourth. Yeah. Now, when that album comes out, when do you predict it coming out? January, 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 February of uh, next year. Yeah. So I can promise you to come back at that. Oh, time. I'll come back for sure. Yeah, uh, I'd love yeah, to. That'd be absolutely fabulous. Uh, you're talking about Roy, what caught my eye this morning, and uh, over time uh, from last year or the year before when we were talking to you, is the amount of people just on this Black and Rodeo Kings album that you've worked with. I mean. That must have been quite. I mean, just mentioned Roseanne Cash. You got Nick Lowe on here. Uh, the the song we just played, "Beautiful Scars," with uh, Dallas Green from City, City and Color. Color. Yeah, uh, are these all done in Nashville? Re- the recordings? Yeah, they're done in Nashville. We're, we we uh, we we work down there primarily. Yeah. We made an album before this called Kings and Queens, right? Uh, and we followed it up with Kings and Kings because we are not very uh, original or creative. Mm-hmm. So we figured well, we did Kings and Queens. I guess Kings and Kings. Kings and Queens had uh, Roseanne Cash, Patty. Scott, Alpha, uh, Bruce Springsteen's His wife, uh, yeah. wife, uh, Emmy Lou Harris, Lucinda Williams, uh, Pam Tillis, uh, Roseanne Cash. Uh, of these course. are these are elite people here. How do you how do you get hold of them? To, well, uh, to I, I, I got to tell you, we 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 thought of the Kings and Queens album about eight years ago. It right. came out six years ago, and uh, we came up with this idea. Why don't we do an album of Kings and Queens do duets? Yeah. And then we, you know, this is a conversation within the band, right? We're driving mm-hmm. down the road. And uh, we said, well, what, you know, what, wonder what women we should get. And then they came up, well, why don't we get up, why don't we call some women who are fans of ours already? Yeah. Lucky for us, our fans in the female country world were Amy Lou Harris, Lucinda Williams, Roseanne Cash, and Pam Tillis. They were, they were wow. already people that were fans, came to our shows. Johnny Cash was, you know, like Blackie and the Rodeo Kings yeah. as well. And so uh, Colin Linden from the band called those four women and yeah. they all said yes and it was like wow uh oh I guess we're making a record so, <laughs> and uh, the same kind of thing with yeah. uh, with this album is uh, we called up fans we called up Vince Gill and Jason Isabel Bruce Coburn who we've mm-hmm. been playing with off and on for years yeah and uh, uh, a Buddy Miller uh, and also the uh, the cast of the TV show Nashville. Those oh, are the I guys. watched that series. Yeah, yeah, well, Colin Linden from Blackie and the Rodeo Kings is actually in that show. Oh, okay. Um, uh, he's little guy, black hat. Black beard, little Jewish looking fellow. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, anyways, Colin, uh, Colin called up uh, a few of the guys, right. and all of a sudden it was okay. Now we're making a Kings and Kings record. So, the fact of the matter is, is that um, the people that I've written for, the people that I've duetted with, sung with, uh, our biggest fans are other musicians. Yeah. You know, I mean, when I talk about, you know, who I, who's recorded my songs and who's recorded with me, it's you know a, a very nice list of, of friends, people yeah. like uh, everyone from Sarah McLaughlin to, you know, Colin James to uh, the Rankin family, but um, I'm not really worried about fame mm-hmm. or money, which is comes in handy when you're in the music business. Yeah, I'm just interested in continuing to create, and now, after this book, which has become you know a national bestseller, I actually sell more books than I do records, to yeah. tell you the truth, but after um, uh, discovering that uh, my family here in Ganawagi and uh, finding uh, my way back home. Uh, that's my inspiration now for my art, for my writing, for my music, and yeah. for my visual art. So that is going to be the most important thing, is telling my story about coming home here and doing things like playing with the National Arts Center Orchestra yeah. in Ottawa, doing a show dedicated to Ganawage, you know, that's that's important to me. Yeah. And and really in life, 
As artists or professionals or whatever it is we're trying to do, we have to do things that really are important to our hearts. And uh, this is what's important to my heart. Yeah, and it will work out in the end. Where um, I like asking musicians this because I don't have it in my brain. The information, the the, the talent, the information, the, the creativity... Uh, I mean, you're writing books, you're writing songs of all different genres. You see me working with an orchestra and everything else. Does this funnel through you? Where does it come from? Do you know? Do you feel it? It just comes out. Uh, explain it to me. Uh, I, I, I've been for a lifetime trying to understand that on, on my terms. Well, <clears throat> you choose to work at being an artist. You yeah. never become an artist. Let's just say that. Yeah, okay. So and working to be to become an artist, you do that. You choose that path, as I say, not for the fame or the money. You choose it because you love it. You choose you choose it because you love it and because you want to do whatever you want to do, yeah. when you want to do it, without anyone telling you how to do it. Okay. So uh, it, when ideas come to my mind, yeah. uh, like putting a, together a symphonic show right. about Ganawage and my way home, I just do it. I just do it and write it, and then you know. Luckily, I have agents and managers and accountants have the and people sort of stuff, that yeah. that uh, help me work out uh, setting up the shows uh, with like symphony orchestras and, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's 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 a it's a great process and it's a great outlet for me. And I I just feel like a, being an artist is kind of like being in a bar fight. You know, you could get really hurt, you could die, mm -hmm. uh, and being an artist is like being in a bar fight because you grab whatever it is around you to survive and. That's yeah. what you do when you work as an artist. You make decisions based on your heart's desire and uh, and all the drive and all the energy mm -hmm. will follow. Do you find that you probably worked harder at that than you would if you had a regular nine to five job? Oh hell yeah! But I mean, I'm not. You know, look at me. I know I'm not suited for a nine to five job. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, <laughs> <laughs> you know. I know. I, yeah, I get that. I've been there myself. And, it, and I, I'll be quite honest with you, and I didn't go into it too deeply in the book, and it's just, uh, it's, I got uh, being, choosing this life has kept me out of trouble. It's kept me, be quite honest, out of jail. It's kept me well, it's from making bad decisions. It's, it's, it's cradled, uh, it's cradled my, uh, <laughs> my wild nature to a certain extent, pulled me back and kept me alive. Because, uh, it's interesting you say that because a lot of artists, it is exactly what got them into trouble. Yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, there, there's, uh, listen, I got into plenty of trouble, but yeah. I, I didn't, it didn't go as far as it might have had I not uh, yeah. had the focus of, of creating. Yeah, exactly. Jake out loud, subscribe. Uh, let me ask you a few uh, uh, things here. I mean, we covered a lot about your albums and, and stuff like that, and then go a little off. Um, how do you feel uh, you're you know you got people helping you in the music industry uh, the way the industry is going now whether it's playing live or getting your music out there with all the music services how do you find that is working for you or how could it work for younger people who I know a bunch of younger people starting bands and it's daunting and it almost feels like why bother mm. you know uh, you know again I'm talking to uh, Pay to play in bars for young guys uh, they can't get gigs they have to create their own gigs you know uh, to, oh sure it's on Spotify but I made 10 cents you know what I mm -hmm. you know where I'm going with this well you know uh, it's you know why don't you just go get a job digging digging ditches and mm -hmm. and complain about that you can complain about anything you know what I mean we yes, I mean we, I we as <laughs> we as a uh, we as a human race can complain about doing anything. Mm -hmm. uh, you make the choice to be an artist, as I said, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's it's 24 hours, seven day a week job. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know your business, if you don't know why you're doing things or you don't have a plan. I mean, you know what? Some of the greatest entrepreneurs are musicians. Yeah. And drug dealers. But um, <laughs> musicians for the most part, you know yeah. what I mean? Because uh, you, you, you figure out how to survive and what works for you. Yeah. I, listen, I, 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 I hear this uh, story. Yeah. I was this story. Yeah. In fact, you know what? 
I still am this story because yeah. on my ride back to Ontario today, I'm going to be on the phone with my manager. I'm going to be putting together the next move and how to keep surviving and how to keep yeah. making money, you know? And I mean, That's I even right. wrote in my book, and I, I don't advise this to people, but I mean, when I back in the 80s, when we had to put gas in the car, we just, I figured out to look at my audience and see what they needed because mm-hmm. we were traveling salesmen. We were bringing music around for the, you know, crappy bars all yeah. across the four one from Montreal to Detroit and I looked at my audience and I saw that they needed speed Mm -hmm. so I started selling speed on the road and that's basically what kept us going from gig to gig now listen I'm not saying that that's a cool thing to do I'm not saying it because I thought I was cool doing it but I knew that that would supplement the income of the band to be able to keep us going it was a necessary evil it was a necessary evil you know what I mean and uh, it was tricky uh, because selling drugs on the road and getting out of town before the locals found out you were doing it not a good idea not a good idea no no definitely not a good idea let's switch gears here a little bit because we're going to end off with you playing a song but I like switching gears uh, and asking some questions that are are fun Mm -hmm. okay all right uh the first question is um dead or alive okay now this is going to be maybe a difficult one for you because you've played with so many people who would you like to share the stage with dead or alive and why I mean, you obviously have worked with a lot of people, but uh, let's eliminate some of the ones that you did work with. <sighs> did it, well, I mean, uh, I don't have the chops, but I would have been happy to be on stage with Miles Davis, you know, even, okay. if, even if I was just bringing him glasses of water. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, there's musicians that I wish uh, I, I would have been, uh, been able to be in the presence of yeah. that I missed out on. Luckily, over the years, I mean, I've been managed to tour with everybody from you know Bob Dylan to Green Day, yeah. So I've I, I, I've been able Very to lucky see. In that respect. Well, you know, trust me. You know what? I'm I'm in. I played music because, yeah. like you, I was a fan yeah. of music. You know, being in a band yeah. with Garth Hudson. Yeah, that is that. Hey, listen, it's my. It's actually my mother. Uh, calling <laughs> from Mom. Ontario. I have to I have to talk to her later. Um. Uh, yeah, be, like I mean, like that—that yeah. that was a big deal, you know. I, what I, I mean? mind you, uh, you mentioned Garth Hudson because we were—he had a birthday just the other day. Uh-huh. And uh, when I was listening to some of your music this morning, the first thing that came to mind was the band. Well, I mean, uh, as uh, an it, influence, yeah. Oh, as That's an influence, a- yeah. Because I mean, Hamilton uh, uh, was—you uh, got to think about. Uh, uh, I was, I was, I was in England uh, okay. t- t- several years ago on the BBC. I was being inter- interviewed on BBC Radio, yeah. and, and the interviewer said, "Oh, you have quite a southern." sound. I don't do good British accents by the way. <laughs> and I find uh, it very annoying, the accent, by the way. Uh, listen, uh, so I said, you have a very southern sound. And I said, well, what do you mean? Like southern Ontario? It's, oh, 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 surely I don't know what you mean. I said, well, let me tell you what I mean. There's a highway that runs out of Hamilton. Runs down to Lake Erie. I call it the Mystic Highway. I made this up as I went along, yeah, but okay. the stories are true. So the Mystic Highway is Highway 6. It runs down to Port Dover through Turkey Point. It's where Robbie Robertson spent his summers on the Six Nations. Um, it's where uh, uh, the Mohawk, the music being made by the Mohawks and migrant workers who were coming up to work the tobacco fields from the islands all fused together and where Summer Gardens was happening, where Ronnie Hawkins was playing, where Little Richard was playing. It's the road that Ronnie Hawkins fired his bass player, Rebel Payne, because he was drunk, threw him out on Highway 6 and picked up this kid who grew up shitting in a Crisco can in Turkey Point, Ontario, named Rick Danko. It's where the band was formed. It was on yeah. Highway 6. And the band, for, for historians or for non-historians that don't pay attention, the band is responsible for what they call Americana music. That's right. I mean, it's right. very That's underplayed, right. overshadowed by the Grateful Dead and the Allman Brothers. The yeah. band were responsible yeah. for bringing together country and western and blues yeah. and rock and roll and fusing it together and writing their own songs. It's why Bob Dylan picked them to be his band. So the band is a big influence on uh, on what we've done just because of where I grew up in Hamilton. There, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there you go. Uh, one last thing, and I think you probably even answered it, and it's an interesting question, but I think I know what your answer is. 
Um, what surprised you the most about your career? Something that you never thought would have happened. I'm still doing it. That's the second. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're, I, I get a lot of different answers with that one. Yeah. There's only two people that answered it that. that. Yeah. You and Frank Marino. That's oh, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Mahogany Rush. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, I, I'm still doing it. And uh, that is, I, I, I lecture, right? How I found out that I was... A mohawk yeah. was by going on a speaking tour, right? And the girl saying, "I, you know, I, I, my, my grandmother was friends with your mother, Bunny Wilson, and yeah. uh, you know, I, she was there when you were adopted." And when I go out and speak, I talk about, you know, why do we do what we do? It's not for. I'll say it again. The money is great. I've done really well. The yeah. fame, not in Quebec, but everywhere else, <laughs> yeah. you know, done okay. You know what I mean? But. You keep playing music or creating art or writing books so that you can wake up tomorrow and do it again. Because it's you never want to arrive. Your train never wants to hit the station. Yeah. You want to keep going towards it. So uh, when you try to figure out artists, it's like trying to figure out the Joker in the Batman movie. You know, yeah. where, where uh, the gangsters all want to kill him yeah. and uh, they give him all the money. Right, mm-hmm. he piles the money up and he burns it. They can't figure out what motivates him, and it's yeah. chaos in his case. But for artists, it's to be able to keep creating. So that's what I'm yeah. here for. That's what I'm chatting with you here for. Absolutely, and it's it's why I do what I do. Okay, you got a second mic or just the one mic? Just one mic. I pick it all up. No worries. Oh, it's like Sun Records. You're like you're like Sam. Oh Phillips. yeah. Uh, I d- one thing I did that I never thought I did, I mentioned earlier, was uh, I stepped on stage at the Grand Old Opry uh-huh. and played there on a Saturday night. I stood, well, stood close to where Hank Williams stood. They have a big cutout in the stage of where Hank Williams used to stand. Yeah. Right? Excellent. Very nice. Love that song. Oh, good. Thanks. Uh, that's a great song. Steve Earle's going to steal that one from you. What is well, I, w- I wish he would. Well, I wish he'd steal it and just leave, you know, just leave a, a sock on the door, a couple bucks under the door, you know? <laughs> Tom Wilson, thank you for coming by. Hey, an absolute pleasure. And like I say, it took me 59 years to get here. Yeah. I hope that I can come back again. You're always welcome here. And anytime you're in town. Just come on by. Okay. It's that good. And when you got the new album coming out in January, the, you have to make a promise to come by. I will come by. You okay. know what? Actually, you know, the symphonic record is going to be coming out the end of September. Right. And I'm doing the show in Ottawa. I'm going to try to make my way here before yeah. the show in Ottawa. Absolutely. Okay. That'd be fantastic. Yeah.